My name is Amata, and in this Red Gamer Tech video, I'm here to give a early impressions of The Thin Silence, a game which was developed by 2PM Studios and published by Nikidu Games. Now, two things before I actually get started on this particular video. The first of which is that I did receive this game for free. This is not a promoted video, but I did, again, receive it for free. The second is that I'm doing this differently to how I normally do. I normally do live commentary as I play games for a look at videos but after playing this game for a fairly significant amount of time I decided that this does not suit this game at all which so that's why I'm doing commentary after the fact with pre-recorded footage so do keep that in mind so this game is fairly cheap it's £7.19 and it's also fairly short it's four to five hours long according to the Steam page and obviously that does depend on how good or bad you are at puzzles but it is not a puzzle game. It's a little hard to pin down in terms of its genre, I would say, because it has elements of... I don't want to say platformer, because that's not right, because your character can jump maybe one centimetre off the ground, but you're definitely sort of doing the thing of, like, you know, going up and down platforms, but you're mostly using lifts and other methods of, of traversal, that sort of thing. I guess the best way to pin this game down would be a narrative adventure game, which is how it's described on the Steam page. And I would say that is a fairly apt description, because the strength of this game is in its narrative. Now, I do not want to talk too much on the specifics of the story, so I'm going to leave that segment till last, and I'm very much going to talk in sort of vague general generalities, because one of the other reasons that I decided to do this style of video for this one is because I did not want to do a live commentary and come across a huge story spoiler and have you guys basically not enjoy this game as much if you do decide to give it a bash. So the actual core gameplay of this is you know you wake up as your character whose name you discover is Ezra and you don't know where you are, you don't know how you got here and the sense of mystery is kind of created from that get-go of like okay who is this person, where are they, how did they get here and you know what is going on with them in general because it quickly becomes clear that Ezra is kind of going through some things, I don't want to talk too much of specifics again, and part of the story is him dealing with that, him dealing with his past, and again how it ties into the world. But the main gameplay itself is fairly simplistic, but I don't mean that in a bad way, I mean that in a good way, because basically you you just want to traverse, you want to, you want to progress, you want to find new items, you want to find more lore documents which are scattered around, and you do that by trying to find items in the world, and as you get more items, you combine them together to create new ones, which are going to help you traverse, because your character's movement is extremely limited. You, you walk at a fairly slow space, you can't jump at all really, you can't definitely can't leap across massive gaps or anything like that. So it's all about using the environment to progress and go forward and obviously find new items, get more lore and the occasional comment from Ezra himself. So how you do this is just to give you an example from fairly early on in the game is you find some boots, they're your first item that you find and they allow you to kick things. That sounds like I say, okay that sounds a bit strange but you can kick rocks out of the way, you can kick barriers down that might be raised up, that sort of thing, but then the next item you find is a bunch of hooks. So you can bind the boots with the hooks and then you've got climbing boots which you can then use to climb over rocks and other surfaces, say like a chain link fence, stuff like that to help your character climb because again, without the aid of these items you can't do much at all. So that is the crux of the thing the main gameplay I suppose you could say you know mechanically it is simple if you are a mechanically driven gamer this game is probably not going to be for you I don't mean that as an insult to the game I just mean that it's not a game where you're like you know doing a hollow knight for example you're not g gaining new abilities not doing a metroidvania you're not killing enemies or anything like that this is a game purely about story and exploration in terms of exploring the world and exploring more about what is going on with this character but the mechanics that are there are very well executed and each item kind of tells a little bit of a story in itself and some items even relate to Ezra personally. I don't want to again talk too much on specifics but an item that you find later on is an energy uh, energy cell and a rope and you find out due to this that he used to work on a work crew and kind of get a little bit more about him that sort of stuff. So it is purely about kind of puzzling your way through. It's not a puzzle game. I don't want to say that because it isn't. 
but you do have to kind of solve the puzzle of the environment to figure out how you're going to get this person who cannot do you know superhuman feats like leaping across the room or anything like that to progress you're just like basically a normal person this is probably what you would as a person in real life would have to do if you found yourself in this strange situation now one thing I want to really touch on here is the environment and the atmosphere that this game actually invokes because I feel that, that is one of the strongest elements of this game because as soon as you load in the graphics in combination with the music set an eerie mysterious atmosphere. It's a little bit kind of uneasy but I don't want to say it's scary because it's not and it's not trying to be scary but it's definitely eerie and a little bit unsettling as, and it immediately raises questions with how the game starts as to okay how did this person get here, who are they and what is going on with them because again as I already said it becomes clear pretty quickly that Ezra has some issues shall we say. So as you progress you find lore documents and there are general lore or there's stuff that is related to the main character. And as you explore, you kind of see more about the world because this game definitely has a lot of little touches in the background. Background storytelling I'm definitely a fan of because that is one of the things I love about games. They don't have to just tell you something directly. They can kind of infer or imply or tell you in a way that is non-verbal just by, hey, this is a thing in the background. You know, perhaps like, for example, there's a ruined castle in the background or something, or there's a ruined house here or something like that. Just to give an example, purely talking off the top of the head here. And that in itself tells you, okay, people used to live here. Okay. Interesting and nugget of information. And then you kind of tuck that away with everything else that you've kind of seen directly or indirectly. But the atmosphere is very, very well invoked and ties really well with the story itself. Now, again, I do not want to talk too much about specifics. As I already said, one of the main reasons I decided to do the video this way is so that I didn't come across any spoilers and well, spoil the game for you. Because... I want you guys, if you decide to check this game out, to discover the story for yourself because it is definitely the game's strong point. The narrative is very well presented. You know, your character is alone for a fairly significant portion of the game given how short it is, but you still start to learn things about him and learn that, okay, there's some issues going on with him and his past and that kind of ties into why he's here. But you do eventually run into other characters and they start to help you kind of figure out more about the world itself how there's some sort of war going on, that sort of thing. And how, again, that ties back to Ezra's personal history. And it, it definitely keeps you interested, it keeps you hooked. I really want to get back into the game, because I played about half of it, I want to say, and figure out exactly what's going on, exactly where the story is going to take me, and exactly what it's going to surprise me with next. And the journey of discovery that it's taking us on. You know, you're not just exploring the environment and discovering items and ways to progress, you're exploring and discovering parts of this character. And I think, you know, not to sound all pretentious and arty about it, but, you know, games can have power behind their story. I think that's one of the reasons why Hellblade was so successful, because it was a difficult subject that they dealt with in a very, very cool way, and it had power, especially if you dealt with mental illness issues yourself, or you know someone who has as a friend or family member, or whatever and I feel like this game has similar elements of you know it has impact the story carries weight and I do not want to talk too much on specifics again because you know a they've asked me not to spoil certain things and b I don't want to anyway even if they hadn't asked me because well that is where the strength of this game lies it's the game is is not mechanically you know complex or anything like that but it is complex in its story and how it is presented is done really really well and one thing I definitely want to give praise to is how, despite the fact that it has a very simplistic pixel graphic style, the game still has a ton of character. It's not just pixels because they're lazy or don't have artistic talent, which some guys definitely do do, let's be real. You can still tell that a absolutely ball-busting amount of work went into how this game was presented and how the world and Ezra still has a ton of character and I think the character from Ezra himself, you know, and you know, ignoring stuff like the comments he directly makes or thinks to himself and his reaction to certain things, which definitely ties into how he comes across as a person within this game. But I think one of the things that it does do also do well, sorry, is the animation. A lot of little touches that I think kind of combine to make him feel more real. Little stuff like are we going to breathe hard after certain actions and 
how, for example, you can kind of tether after a certain point in the game between two points and how his arms kind of wobble as he's crossing over this rope and just little touches on the animation that just kind of make him feel more real. And considering that you know he doesn't really have a face to speak of exactly, I think that combined with the strong writing really helps you get a sense of who this person is. So basically the TLDR of all of this is that this is a game which can be challenging. I was stuck on one room for ages, but for those of you who like your really challenging platform platformers, this isn't Super Meat Boy or anything like that. It's not a challenging puzzle game. I think I was just being thick, but you know, it definitely has puzzles to solve. You need to get past the environment. It is item versus environment, so you need to figure out which items you need to use and on what item and in what way, in what order. You know. Again, mostly coming, uh, trying to get around the fact that your character has very, very limited mobility. And while the graphics are simplistic, they are still really, really pretty. And again, tie in perfectly with that sort of eerie, mysterious atmosphere that this game has going on that really kind of draws you in and makes you want to discover more. And once again, this ties in pretty well with the soundtrack, which it's haunting, it's beautiful, it's eerie, but it's also subdued because, you know, this game is not about loud, bombastic explosions or anything like that. It's just about a strong narrative presented in a very cool way and all of the kind of different sections of the game, you know, Gameplay and story and writing and presentation and music all coming in together to present to you a product which I think is definitely worth your time because you probably tell I've been basically raving about this game for the last 10 minutes. Now, obviously, this probably isn't going to be like game of the year for you or anything like that, but I don't think a game has to be game of the year material to be really, really good and also definitely worthy of mention. Because this game's story is just really good and it's how it's presented and how it keeps you interested and how you can clearly tell they have put a lot of love and a lot of attention into all the little details, you know, the little lore pieces, the, those little animation details that I already mentioned, how well the music is done, you know, the characters that you meet, that sort of stuff. It just goes to show you that short narrative experiences, you know, while they're not for everybody, this isn't going to be for someone who really likes the mechanically driven games, but it just goes to show you that a story well presented in an interesting way is definitely still good, even if it's slightly presented in a minimalistic, minimalistic excuse me, fashion. And obviously it's not, you know, some 30-hour AAA experience. This is clearly sort of a bit homebrew but it has a lot of charm and a lot of hard work has clearly gone into this. So I would highly recommend The Thin Silence to you all. There's going to be a link in the description below this video to the Steam page where you can check out some screen grabs and of course just see if it tickles your fancy, perhaps put it on your wish list for future Steam sales, that sort of thing. I think the only thing that you can kind of say about it, or not the only thing, but one of the things you could say about it in a negative, it's a negative way is the fact that it's a bit too expensive considering how short it is, but it's not expensive. It's only £7.19, but obviously how expensive is too expensive. That is going to very much vary based upon person to person. Obviously, I can't really talk on that because I didn't pay for it. Just perhaps bringing that to your attention that for some it might be a touch too expensive, but I think personally it, it's definitely worth the catch, but that is purely my opinion. And again, I didn't have to pay for that game, so of course, you know, my opinion on that is not really worth all that much, but definitely take it into consideration. This game isn't perfect by any means, it definitely has its issues, like I arbitrarily was killed for reasons that I don't understand a couple of times, but the issues it has are not major, it's just a couple of little kinks, and considering that you can reset the level at any time if you mess up or whatever and you know if you die it's not the end of the world it's not a 10 hour loading screen or anything like that it's nothing huge there are little niggles here and there but this game is definitely worth checking out and you can just feel the amount of love that was poured into it and you can just feel it coming out of the game as well so go check it out guys if you like your story definitely one to put on your radar thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time